Welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for taking time on your Monday evening to join us. Hopefully, you've uh, had a great day. Hopefully, you've enjoyed everything that's been a part of it, and we're just going to make your night that much better. Um, I will say this, though. A, a huge shout-out to MJ. Uh, if you did not get a chance to check out his music mixing show, uh, you missed out. There was There's some great stuff that was in there, a lot of suggestions, stuff. I was like, oh. I didn't think of it that way. Um, so definitely want to make sure that you're checking out his stuff if you did not get a chance. But you are here with us now, and you are going to learn about some very cool things. shaney has got some great topics. She was able to share a little bit with us, and uh, I'm excited for a few of them. And then, of course, some breaking news uh, of stuff that came out as well that we're just going to like surprise you with just because, well, we can't because we're cool like that. Well, actually, Shaney's cool like that. And she brings me along for the ride. So I'm happy about that. Um, but Shaney, hi. Hi. So, uh, you know what? I think we have to jump into it. Okay. So, so um, we want to first tonight. Since I didn't talk about it for maybe like two weeks, um, <laughs> I think I have to bring back Vegas again. <laughs> I think it's just like, it's just a must to see how many artists we can get that are going to have residencies in Vegas. So let's just jump into that. Now I'm going to talk about two artists and well, one's a group and one's an artist. And again, not your typical Vegas type artists at all. Like if, if I, you know, if this was a betting thing, cause it's Vegas and I said, you know, give me maybe, you know, out of the clear blue, like 10 artists that you think would do a residency in Vegas and sell it out and everything. I don't think this would be on your list, Dan. Probably um, not. Yeah. I don't think these would be on your list. So we're going to start with the group and the group that is doing a Las Vegas residency is Journey. Yeah, I wasn't would not have picked Journey. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked Journey either to um to <laughs> to be on my list at all. So I, I guess they just figured, hey, it's the thing to do. Let's jump on the Vegas residency bandwagon like everybody else. I mean, you know, they're like, hey, Aerosmith's doing it. Let's do it. So they are going to do it. They're only going to do nine shows though. Oh, so it's like a little residency. It's like a small residency. <laughs> There's is like the small residency. So they're going to do nine shows. And again, this is going to, I think what Caesar's Palace is doing at that Coliseum, I think they're just basically going to, I think they're basically just saying, we're going to sell out every date possible from January 1st to like December 31st. And we're going to put as many artists that we can, whether it be a five show, a, a 16 show, um, a five month show, we're going to put small groups in between others. And we're going to be like the place to go to just see residencies. So again, Caesars has done it again. They got journey. This is going to be um, all of October. So if you're thinking about taking um, a vacation to Vegas, and you want to see journey, then journey it is they are going to be at Caesars Palace at the Coliseum October 9th, 11th and 12th. 16th, 18th, 19th, 23rd, 25th, 26th. Those are their three shows. Um, they just toured in 2018. So they were, they were, they toured and I didn't realize this. They did a 56 date tour, but I didn't realize who their tour mate was. Ooh. So if you were to pick a tour mate for Journey, Spice who Girls. Who would you say? Spice Girls. They, you know, Spice Girls, they do their tour. They're just getting back together for, for their United Kingdom thing. I, I legitimately, I, yeah. I would say, I would say, um, I think it would be cool, like, to see another classic rock group, like an ACDC or, um, like a Def Leppard type of thing. Just okay. To, well, guess what? Did they I get were, my wish? They were on tour in 2018 with Def Leppard. You just, you missed it. Figures. See, we, we, should done this, we should have done this two years ago. Then I may have been prepared. Right? I should have just done all the tours instead of the Vegas tours now. So, yeah. So, they were in 2018. They did a tour, a 56-day tour with Duff Leppard. Okay. So, I guess now they just figured, like, we're going to just do a residency by ourselves. So, Journey, Vegas residency in October, if you guys are um, thinking about one of the residencies there. Okay. Very cool. 
Now, if you don't, yes, you know, I had to at least do two. Well, I think I know of a third. I can't remember if we talked about it or not. So let's, let's go this direction and then I will. uh, Okay. Yeah. So um, another residency, this one is actually April, May. Um, And this one is a 12 show residency. And again, Caesar's palace Coliseum. And this one is James Taylor. Okay. Okay. I think they're they're pulling they're pulling in the older crowd for this residency. Um, he's seventy one now. So and this is his first Vegas residency. He's never like even in the past when he was younger, never did a Vegas residency. He said he, he was approached, just never felt like he wanted to do a Vegas residency. But because he's jumping on the bandwagon of everybody, he's like, I want to do it too. <laughs> yeah, he didn't he didn't want to look like. He didn't want to look like Donnie and Marie. Right. But now that it's a cool thing to do. Right. And now that Donnie and Marie are getting out of it. So he figured I'm going to get into it and they're going to get out of it. So, um, you know, who talked him into it? Garth Brooks. Okay. G- Garth Brooks told him do the Vegas residency. It, it couldn't hurt. I mean, I mean, good for him at 71. Like, I mean, we, we talked about all the other, you know, 70 something artists doing it and ZZ Top and, and all, everybody else. Um, so, yeah, so he's doing 12 shows. He said if all goes well, he might do a couple more. But right now he's down for 12 shows. Um, April 17th, 19th, 20th, 24th, 26th, 27th, May 1st third, fourth, and the eighth, 10th, and 11th. And he said he's very excited to do it. He's going to be bringing his one-man band drum machine with him so he could pull out all his songs with the drum machine he that he's used to using. And where was the set again? Again, it is at the Coliseum, like all okay. the other residencies, yeah. Okay. So no see, no see one up journey. Because he yeah. went for, well, not one up, three up. He's yeah. doing 12. And he said, and he might add, and he said he might add more. Yeah. Journey didn't do that. <laughs> That's his way of saying, you know, if they like me enough, I'll, I'll stick around. It's got to be less wear and tear than doing an actual tour, I would assume. Right. So, yeah. They, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, we've talked about, you know, the art or a lot of these places bringing in these residencies and stuff like that, but it, because of all we're hearing and stuff like that, it definitely seems like they're trying to, the, the businesses there are trying to revitalize some of this entertainment idea that was always there, but not maybe as forefront. Yeah. You know, it was kind of more, you just had people that always played Vegas. And now you've got groups that are coming in and playing Vegas. You know, a lot. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. if we think about how many I've mentioned that are doing residencies, we're over 10 so far. Oh, easily. We, yeah. we've easily done over 10. Yeah. So the one that I'm not sure if we talked about and I can't find it. Um, oh, maybe this isn't as legit as what I heard. Okay. I heard that, so, so I was, I, I heard kind of in passing a news story okay. and it was of, of another residency. Now I do a quick search and I see of a thing that popped up four days ago. It's like, oh, well, they're pushing for this. Oh, uh, Spice Girls. I, I, I jokingly said Spice Girls, but I, I had heard that there's talk of them doing a residency as well. Um, but as I'm looking it up, it looks like, you know, Mel B is pushing them to try and accept that they've been offered. Um, well, now it's saying that they have landed one. I don't know. I haven't fully read into it. So I'm just. Okay. I, I personally don't know of any Spice Girl residency yet. All right, you keep talking. I'm going to look this up. Okay, so yeah, so I'm I'm going to keep talking, um, and I'm actually going to start uh, going on to like the next the next topic, which for those that don't know and they live under a rock, um, Taylor Swift is back, and she's back in full force. So those that do events that are are they Swifties? Is that what they? I don't know what they are. I don't yeah. know what her. I think they're Swifties. Um, get ready because you're going to get tons and tons of requests for for her new song and everything. And in fact, she is doing her new song at the. She's going to be the opener 
for the Billboard Music Awards Wednesday. So sh this, so if you think it hasn't even hit yet, after she does a Billboard, it's it's going to hit, but it has hit. So for those that don't know, she came out with a new song called "Me," and um, she f she figured, well, let me just bring some friends with me. So she actually brought Brendan Yuri, who is from Panic at the Disco, and she. You know, as we know, she she drop. You know, the minute she drops music, all of social media freaks out. Like it's just tons and tons social media posts all over the place. You know, Tay Tay is back. Tay Tay is back. Da 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 da. da everything. So um, she was smart. Her people were very smart. Um, for those that don't know, I mean, she's originally from Nashville. So for those that are just think she's like this pop crossover, she wasn't, she, you know, back in the day, she was country, she was, pop, you know, she's originally from Nashville. And for those that also don't know, and they, um, they just had the draft, the NFL draft, which was in Nashville. So her PR team, very, very smart, very, very like, it's not, she didn't need this because like I said, the minute she comes out with new music, it's all over. So it's like Beyonce all over social media. But she announced her new music video live on ABC during the 2019 NFL draft, like literally during the draft, like they cut to Robin Robinson Roberts and Taylor Swift and announced her like her video. So like, tell me that like her PR people aren't like awesome for doing that for her. So this is her first, um, her first music release since the 2017 album Reputation, which she just went on tour, like fin just finished up her whole tour and everything, which had a bunch of number ones with that too. And of course, the since she announced the music video, it's been trending since the draft and everything. And it was the most watched video in 24 hours by a solo or female artist. Like that's how many people have watched it. It was 65.2 million views in 24 hours. And just to kind of give you like the heads up when, I don't know if you guys remember when I talked about when Ariana Grande jumped on with her thank you nest next and she was doing her little clues like all of her social media and posting little things. Hers was 55 million in 24 hours. This is 65.2. But still holding at number one is BTS. I told you guys that they're going to be around. If you haven't been like following BTS, BTS is still holding with their, that new song that they came out, um, Boy With Love, at 74 million. Yeah, so I mean, it was like boom, boom, boom. So Taylor Swift is back. This song just dropped, me with the video and everything. So, um, and I said, and again, she will be opening the Billboard Music Award show on Wednesday with it. So if it hasn't hit in like the top five yet, it's going to hit after Wednesday. So for those that do those type of events, and just be ready that if you don't have the song, make sure you get the song because you're going to need it after Wednesday for your next weekend of events this weekend coming up. I almost wonder if it didn't need, <laughs> if it didn't get as many plays because of the way some of the local programming was run. The iHeart stations, I think on Friday, dropped it every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. Sirius who did it over the weekend um, to, the, to the point that, if you weren't in front of a streaming type of device and you were listening to the quote unquote traditional, you were going to get, you were getting slammed with it on both sides. So I almost wonder if maybe that actually kept some of the numbers, some of the streaming numbers down because they were hearing it in some other places as well. Well, this was just within the 24 hours. Right. So this was, was just so that was the iHeart day. I mean, that's, that was Friday. Yeah. But this was just when she dropped it at the draft. Oh, the this, video, video, yeah, the video, Sorry. yeah, not I, the song, the video. Spotify, and I'm thinking, yeah, that. no, 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 we, I don't even get those numbers yet. Yeah, those numbers will come in next week for me from from last week. Yeah, this is just her drop in the video, just like when the Thank You Next dropped, just like when Boy with Love dropped. So K-pop still, still, still has the Screaming Girls more than uh, than Taylor Swift, but sixty five point two mil. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, that's yeah. 
<laughs> That's just crazy. So that is going to be the hot Taylor Swift song until she probably drops drops the next one off the new album. Yeah. A couple of people in the chat room, just, just to clarify, yeah. some of our PA people, myself included, Taylor Swift was actually originally from Eastern PA. So like Reading, Allentown area. And yes. She moved, but she moved to last Nashville when she was like 12. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's why she, she, that's why she calls Nashville home because that's when she really was started doing the music and everything. Mm -hmm. So, all righty. Oh, uh, let's moving on. Number two, number three. Two? Yeah, sure. Five. I don't even know what number I'm on. Yeah, three, uh, five. four. I don't know, something like that. Um, I know this happened two weeks ago, but because of the shows we did, I really didn't. I personally didn't get to talk about it. I know there have been videos and everything, but a new controller came out. So for those that don't know or haven't seen anything, I know probably MJ already probably did a video on it, and it's been you know all over social media. But Pioneer dropped a new DDJ 800. So their new controller, it's sweet, it's hot. It's basically a two channel controller for a record box. That's like the club style layout and the features of the DDJ 1000. So those that always, um, always wanted the DDJ 1000 or always said like it was too big for them or didn't want that four channel controller, you might want to look into this one because this basically has all kind of like those features in the two channel. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the high def LCD screen and, you know, and everything. And again, this is a record box, you know, so it's not for those that don't want to, um, you know, are like, Oh, I can do virtual DJ. I don't, I'm sure you can map that out and stuff like that, but this definitely is a record box. Um, controller and i think retail price is 899 if i'm not mistaken i think that's what it is for this one um and their biggest feature that they talked about with this which um i have not tested it out anywhere so i i don't know and i can't say like oh yeah it's totally cool but i'm sure it is totally cool is the feedback reducer for the mic mm. so if for some reason, your MC, who you'll need to kick in the head because if it is your personal MC, they should know not to walk in front of a speaker. But if you, you know, have people doing speeches or you're doing some type of corporate thing and they just start taking the mic and they, and they start, even though you say to them, stay in within like this area and all of a sudden they start walking. Um, supposedly it, a big feature they have on there is called the feedback reducer feature for, for the microphone. Nice. Yeah. Is mic input two and mic inputs? It has two. So is this on both? I believe it. I mean, yeah, I want to say it, it is. It's just okay. it wouldn't be like on mic number one. I think it's it definitely is on on both mic inputs. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So sometimes you, sometimes you never know. Like I, that's why I wasn't sure. It's like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm gonna like, assume it oh, is on I'm, mic one and mic two is like high low. Right, right, right. I'm going to assume that they were smart enough to do it on both and not just on on one mic. But again, don't quote me on that. I didn't look. That one I didn't look to Shaney see. Said. Yeah, Shaney said, call Pioneer and be like Shaney said, and they're just going to roll your eyes. Oh, Shaney, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you were really loving the the 1000, but you just thought it was too big or you just didn't want a four channel for whatever reason or want it for smaller events or smaller gigs and, you know, want a lighter, more compact one, um, this is this is better. Two channels. So check it out if you're a Rucker Box fan. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see. It's nice to see some stuff continue to get released. You know what I mean? Like we're not just sitting here. We're not just hearing Nam, and then we don't hear anything for like till summer. Yeah. Like some of these are, are continue to push it. And, and a, a two channel version of that, I think will be nice for those people, especially that don't want the. The big. Want, right. Um, yeah. You know, I have, I have a four channel controller, but I only use two at a time. So, I mean, I know for like my small stuff, if I'm doing like a house party, if I'm doing like a two hour, like, elementary type school party not like the big ones but again like an hour and a half type school or like i said just like house party backyard party stuff like that i don't bring my big unit i don't bring my four channel i bring my little two channel 
because it's just it's just me spinning. It's you know maybe making a couple announcements, but it's not. I'm not bringing because I'm not even bringing like a big sound setup either. You know, I'm bringing very small speakers, and it's you know in the house, and and so I love that. Like you said, you don't always have to have like the big controller, or the big four channels, and stuff like that. That's why I always love that I always had my big setup, and then like my smaller setup. You know, for for things like that. So I yeah, I love that they're doing things like that. I I just kind of looked down at the chat. So does that mean I have to drink? I did. Oh. Technically it wasn't said, but it's by him. So it's, it's, yeah, it's by him. And it's like, he's like the eye in the sky with us. Yeah. So John, this sip is for you. <laughs> Reggie, um, I bet MJ could figure out a way to make it work. Just saying. Yeah. I. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, I will say this. I'm kind of curious to see what direction some of these people go with this. I mean, that you know, that's that was a you know taking their four channel down to a two, two channel. I'm curious to see what some of the next evolution is going to be. Um, just my brain kind of thinking. Anyway. Like, how do you mean? Like, in what way? Well, I mean, so we we had some big stuff come come out, Nam and 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 whatnot. And we you know we heard from obviously we saw Denon's in their you know their prime. Uh, and now we're seeing record box and going from four to two and, and reworking some of those things. And I'm just curious to see what's going to hit the summer as we get closer to expo. Yeah. Um, are we going to see another standalone? Are we going to see, you know, are we going to see a group like pioneer? What if I said, yes, <laughs> well, I'm just, I, let me say, I, let me say this. I'd be a fool to believe that there's not going to be some other standalone. Yes. But what, I'm, what I'm curious. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, that that's a given. And but, there will be other controllers too. Are we going to see certain groups say, you know what, we're just going to say we're going to we're going to focus here and let them focus here? I mean, yeah. I love that we have that variety as DJs to choose from because everybody, you know, not everybody is Serato, not everybody is Rekordbox, not everybody is Virtual DJ, not everybody is that other software that somebody in this um, group. Keep saying, yeah. Does I I don't remember the name of it, but it's something. Don't yeah, know what you're talking about something like some girl's name Meg or something. I don't know, but um, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say is her name is Meg. But I love that as DJs, we all don't have to conform. Right. To to everybody has to have if you're doing a two channel. You have to do this and it has to do this and you know, we always have to use this if you want to do a four channel it has to be like this it has to do that i love that we all have the variety of you know denon has you know now engine prime with their you know with their stuff and you all have different things but i like as um that i can interchange and you know be able to be flexible with all the stuff and that's you know not to bring up the prime four but that was like i saw all these people hating on how well i don't want to use you know the the engine prime and i only use virtual and or i'm going to wait till it maps out to this and it's like i understand where people are coming from but if you can just throw your whole entire music library into another software and it just does everything for you like for instance i could throw my whole serato into virtual DJ and it in my crates and everything pop up. So as a DJ, why wouldn't I want to at least be able to know how to use both? I'm not saying I use both, but there might be a time where I have to use both. So, you know, I like to have that variety that, Hey, let me try this. Let me try that. So I love that the companies are, you know, kind of like, the phones <laughs> they're always coming out with you know something new there it's like oh god i gotta upgrade but but i love it i mean as much as we hate it because it's bad for our pocketbook we love it <laughs> sometimes it's just exciting to try something new yeah i agree with that whether you're going to do use it or not i think it's it's always nice to just you know touch it and 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 be like oh this is really nice i like that and i and i love that like this one it's like they're 1000 but now they just made a two channel Mm -hmm. with the feedback with the pressure yes so you were talking about what the future holds a little bit when it comes to controllers there's a couple of interesting things that are, are uh, circulating here in the uh, back back rooms right now first off if you guys remember about three years ago 
Am I am I on? Okay. No, we're just like Casio, you know we, we're here we're here in the inside Casio scoop, so we're all out, like this. When you, if you guys are, are by Google, search for a Casio C A S I O the X W D J one. What this was is basically a a, a platter and a crossfader. But it was a full DJ controller that had different effects and things on it. But it was, in essence, one side of a DJ controller. And there's there's oh, some yeah. different people are have been creating cases yeah. for one turntable and your mixer, which has been out there for quite a while. But there seems to be a push to get a full size, real performance DJ controller. Casio, I think, might have been ahead of the game a little bit too far because people were. Still, okay, we need to have vinyl looking things over controllers. And then as controllers have become more popular, because I think that this came out um, four or five years ago, and controllers have come a long way since then, um, the word is, is that there's going to be a professional version of a single platter DJ controller that's out. So in essence, you would get your first song going and doing its thing, and then you would switch over to the second platter and do your, your mixing, scratching, what have you, and bring it in. Now, if you watched the MJ show tonight beforehand, I don't think you can do some of the tricks that MJ was showing on just one platter. Because to be able to toggle between the two platters and do what you need to do on track A while you're playing track B type of thing. But it's interesting that that's, uh, that, that Casio might have been too far ahead of the game when it came to a single platter controller. The second, and, and Shaney already mentioned this, is there's going to be a couple, there's at least two more standalone units that are coming out in 2019. And there might be a third and a fourth controller, new controllers coming out in 2019 from some of the big companies. Uh, yes. We'll see some at DJ Expo, but probably the coolest one we will not see until fall, maybe even winter, uh, which is obviously for those of us who are kind of excited uh, about what that one will bring to the table. It's just, it would be nicer to have it closer to DJ Expo and then be able to catch the fall. You know, you could have this really cool controller for your high school dance season, but alas, you will have it for prom 2020. Winter formals. How about that? Winter Maybe. formals. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. They don't. Those aren't a real thing. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, that's because you guys are in so much snow there. <laughs> yeah. Formals are basically you, formal. you wear a snowmobile suit that the top the jacket and the pants match. That's formal here in the winter. You know, does your Arctic cat jacket mark match your Arctic cat pants? I thought you guys only wear flannel. No, I it's my it's my car cart hard jacket here. Okay. Anyway, so I I thought I'd jump in and throw that out no, there. I Sorry. love it. That's great. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Where are we at? All right. So we're we're at um the one that just dropped um last night. Okay. So I know, I don't even remember when I talked about this, about us taking the RV. That was the initial, or I think that was the initial yeah, RV yes. ride. We were going to go from Atlantic City up. Right. We were going to go to Atlantic. For those that don't remember, we were going to do um, Atlantic City, and then we were going to go jump in the DJ NTV RV, and we were going to go to Woodstock together. And we were, and John was in the plans of actually putting this together and we were all excited. We were going to get enough like White House subs and everything to last us at least like for the ride and maybe a couple more to just, you know, put in the fridge and stuff like that. Maybe till city limits. That's just about as much. <laughs> okay. Well, for years, so I'll, I'll take like one bite and just be like, yeah, let's just put be it like, down like, nom, 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 like five minutes and take gone. another bite like a half hour later. <laughs> You got to eat them all. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so me. I know we talked about it and, you know, people were on board, but we're sorry to say that it has nothing to do with DJ and TV. Woodstock got canceled. Well, Shani, I don't think we can safely say that because of think of the following of people who would come to see the DJ and TV RV pull in with with White House sub rappers falling out the door as we opened the door and listening to jams played by the greatest DJ software in the world, they, there would be crowds. And I, I really think that security became an issue when they heard that we were coming. I thought it was because we were going to debut our first single. From our jazz album. From our, our jazz, jazz album. album. It could have been then. At one of the smaller stages. And they weren't ready for us. They were like, oh, wait, who? What? No, oh, oh, yeah. we can't handle that. We need we need more stage. We need more security. 
I think that's what it is shows. So for those that don't know that actually when I talked about it, maybe looked into it or wanted to see the artists and I, I don't even know how many artists that I named that were new and old and, yeah, and they had a nice original mix. Woodstock. I mean, there was tons of artists. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Woodstock 50 has been canceled. So there is no Woodstock. Now, of course, the rumors, the rumor mill is flying. So I'm just going to tell you right now what the Woodstock reps have said. These are the reps and then we'll get into what we really think. <laughs> So the Woodstock reps has just said that they have concerns that the site readiness is just, it's not going to be ready for, for Woodstock. They're saying they had permit issues and that's basically what led to the cancellation. Now, for those that haven't really been following us, this isn't next month. Woodstock is August, August 16th through 18th. So they definitely have time. But this also came like two days after the deadline where they were going to open up the tickets to being sold. So basically it was like, oh, this is the, you know, people who had on their calendar, this is the day that I could start buying Woodstock tickets, but they couldn't buy Woodstock tickets because they never went on sale. So the tickets never went on sale. And then people are like, what is going on? What is happening here? And then the organizers just basically said, hey, look, we're concerned that the location isn't going to be able to accommodate like 100,000 people for the festival. And we're concerned about um, safety issues and everything going from the people performing on the stage to everyone that's coming there. Mind you, they've already forked out more than 30 million to the artists. And I'm sure the other artists that haven't got paid yet, they still have to pay. They didn't say that was to all of the artists. All they said was most artists have already been paid. Wow. Mm. So they're definitely in the hole. Like this, what they were all for this. They've already paid 30 million to artists that were going to be there like Jay-Z and then, you know, like Santana, like, you know, all those type of artists. But they're just basically saying, we don't think it's going to be ready for this big type of group coming in here. You know, it's going to be bigger than a Coachella. It's going to be bigger than a stagecoach. You know, for those that don't know the, the California desert ones, the, you know, Burning Man, things like that. This is what stock 50. It's going to be that big. So that's what they were saying. Health and safety reasons. Hmm. Wow. You would think, though, some of that would have been done, I don't know, in the planning process. <laughs> Maybe kind of, sort of. Yeah. I mean, they th I think they had that in the planning process. Like, okay, we're going to, I think the, p the other people that they had involved, like, okay, this is going to be the stage people. This is going to be the people, you know, the subcontractor <laughs> type people. I guess maybe they just weren't the right ones. They weren't the, the ones that, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess they rather cancel it than deal with something like a Fry Festival where it's just going to be just a hot, hot, hot mess. And they didn't, and they also said that they just didn't want to put the Woodstock name on something like that. That's just not going to work out. Hmm. See, on one hand, you've got to give them, got to give them some props for pulling the plug when it would to avoid that mess and yet to stand up and, and pay some of them. Cause I mean, that's, that's certainly not what the fire festival type thing, uh, how that came about. That was collect all the money and, and pay out a few yeah. small things. Just so that, that was cool. That was like, get the tickets, get everything. I mean, this, these people weren't even able to purchase tickets yet. Thank goodness. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, Cause it was in it was in Watkins Glen is what I was seeing also. Right. The location, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, they, that's what they were saying that they don't think the location can accommodate a hundred thousand people um, on the speedway there. I guess that's, that's what they're saying. They just don't feel that it can accommodate that many. And for health and safety reasons, they just don't think that that can happen. Hmm. That would be, that would be a bit of a stretch. Yeah. That's a lot of people to deal with. 
Well, in that area, I mean, it's... It's not like a meal at the White House where everyone can have a, a Big Mac. I mean, they would have to actually really have stuff there. Well, and I mean, it's it's a small little town at the base of a at the base of the lake up there. So how just, how small, just, roughly? Um, I mean, dri driving into Watkins Glen, the only the only I mean, there's a Walmart, there's a couple of fast food restaurants. So it's probably in that three to five thousand. Yeah, probably. Okay. Maybe a little. Maybe a little bit more. And, and, uh, I mean, their big thing is their big thing is like wineries. Oh yeah. That, when they have the, when they have the race come through, like that's huge. It, that weekend is huge, as well as like a couple of the other small things. But it's to have like that influx of people. I just can't imagine what they would, unless you know, the, unless the idea was everybody's camping at the racetrack too. But yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, they're. I, I guess they're trying to compare it to. Like, you know, Coachella, Stage Coast, all that, all those type of, you know, Burning Man. And I guess they just figured we can't go that big. We can't do it the way those are. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. So no Woodstock 50 people. Well, we'll have to make other plans. So next week we will start to announce our next phase of introducing our jazz. Because remember, in the fall, we are going to get on, are going to have our 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 jazz album in the top of the charts no be. not top of the charts top of the we're we're yeah. going for number one like this is the whole reasoning for doing it yeah no, okay so dan and i might be a little bit more just happy to be in the top 10 but shaney the ultra competitive shaney wants the number one spot yeah we're not doing this just to be like in the top 10 then it wouldn't be newsworthy i wouldn't be talking about i don't talk about just top 10 type artists Going we're going for we're going for number one. We're beating Jeff. <laughs> you got this. We go, we're just going to Jeff now. We're, we're beating going, Jeff. We're going to, we're going to beat Jeff. Okay. So next week we'll start to un, unveil our our new plans. We've got to find a new location to yeah, fly. We gotta, yeah, we'll figure it out. We got we got some time. We'll figure it out. We'll just revamp the whole jazz album. It's cool. No stress. No. No. We got this in the bag. So what do we have left? I think I heard that one. I, I, heard, I think we did. Yeah. Excellent. So Alrighty. a couple of house cleaning things. Um, we have got starting June, the week of June 2nd here on DJ and TV. We're going to some, for some of you, you noticed that uh, Jim Cerrone did his farewell show this past Sunday. Um, yesterday. Jim is going to be taking the summer off and he's going to be doing kind of seasons with his show. He did 26 episodes in his first season. So season two of the uh, Perfect Host show with Jim Cerrone will be coming back to us in the fall. So June 2nd, we're going to have a, a little bit more change in some of the shows that are going to kind of step back for summer. But we're going to be adding multiple music shows to our summer lineup. And there'll be more information about this coming here in the next, uh, probably next week, I think is where we're going to have a couple of things nailed down. But we're going to be looking at at shows that are going to be looking at music, some that you're going to be more of a general music knowledge type show, some that are going to be talking about uh, hits for your dance floor, kind of a takeoff from what we did last week. And if you didn't see those, go out to djntv.com slash training. You will see all of the videos from last week. And I, I went through and actually there were a couple of things from last week's show and you guys were doing on Monday night that we used at the prom on Saturday. So even I, who, who've done this for five years, I picked up a couple of ideas last week. So again, those are out of djntv.com slash training. If you see only the six shows from last week, that means you're not in a member of the DJ and TV insiders because that page will take you to hundreds of videos that are training videos for your business. Join and you'll see the hundreds. Don't join and you'll see six music shows, which are good music shows, but there's a lot more there. So um, new new stuff coming June 2nd that week. You'll I mean, we'll be dropping more information about that. Probably not as exciting as the jazz album, but <laughs> it's pretty close. Not as exciting as when Magus Egg 7 comes out, but pretty close. Okay. I think we're pretty good now. It's a good thing you don't drop that more. We'd have to take like pee breaks. <laughs> there was that one show. <laughs> the one where <laughs> MJ did a remix of... <laughs> Uh, the was that his song the most evil song in the or evil word in the world or something yeah 
That's MJ for you. Yeah, that's MJ. But it was wait a minute. Did it beat? Did it actually beat country? Yes, yeah. yes. That's that's in that particular track he made. He made a song that he and I don't remember what he was demonstrating, but yes, he had it where he had pitched it way down, and he used the the name of the software as, and he titled it like the the worst song in the world or something like that. Wow, that's MJ. He wow. has a weird sense of humor. He's he not, does, but we like him anyway. He's not he's not understanding of of culture like we are. Well, obviously, we're cultured people, or we couldn't do a jazz album, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. hello, our jazz trio go. is is, it? is going to be the hottest thing coming out. There's the title for the album: "We Are Cultured People," and we'll transpose the O and the E in people. Oh, this would be great. See here, I thought that was going to be the name of our group, but if you want that to be the name of the album, could be a self-titled sure. album. Self-titled album. There we go. Oh, see how this everything just comes together, gang. Yeah. Dan, take us home. <laughs> All right. So on that note, uh, once again, thank you for much, very much for tuning in. Hopefully you learned a few things. And if you didn't, hopefully you just laughed at us and had a good time. After all, we're here for you either way. We, we do appreciate what you do. And uh, you taking the time to join us on your Monday nights or in the playback shows, wherever you happen to be. If you're not tuning in Monday night, though, you do miss out in the chat room, which uh, can be a lot of fun as well, because John just drops evil words in there as well. So thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Make sure you're checking out the rest of the shows. We'll see you next week. Good night. Oh.